viewers welcome to this video right in this video we're gonna take a look at KOS I don't know you can call it KOS K0S K not S K null S I prefer calling it KOS right let me bring up the website KOS KOS the Kubernetes distribution it has also got the GitHub project that's where they store the code right what is KOS a simple solid certified Kubernetes distribution and it's zero friction it makes your life a lot easier it comes as a single binary there is no dependencies or anything you just download the binary and then you can just start bringing up Kubernetes cluster managing it and things like that zero friction so it reduces the complexity of installing and running a fully conformant Kubernetes distribution zero cost obviously it's open source features so it supports Kubernetes version 1.20 and 1.21 container runtime container D is going to be the default although you can customize it to your liking and then supported architecture supported operating system and then a control plane storage option so if you are going to go with a multi-node Kubernetes cluster it comes with HCD with TLS as the default and if you're going to use a single node cluster then uh, by default you will get a SQL light data storage but you also got an option to use either Postgres or MySQL as an external storage as the Kubernetes data store. Cube router is the default CNI provider although you can use Calico here. Built-in security features so we have RBAC, port security policy, network policies, control plane isolation. Built-in cluster features so DNS is provided by core DNS. We've got a uh, cluster metrics by metric server that's cool and then we also have horizontal port auto scaling so you don't have to enable anything extra and and then you also get features like cluster backup and restore although I haven't actually tried it right let's get started you can go to get started here or you could go to the docs here and then go to the install section quick start guide so in this video I'm just gonna concentrate on the quick start guide and then maybe in the future videos I'll try other areas of this documentation all right I'm going to do this entire thing in a virtual machine okay so for that I'm going to bring up an Ubuntu 20 virtual machine and then go through this document right let me cd to my play directory and i'm going to git clone my vagrant repository so that's where i've got few vagrant files i'll put a link to this all these links in the video description if you want it so cd to vagrant and then to vagrant files so i've got all these vagrant templates I'm going to go into ubuntu 20 i've got the vagrant file and i've got a bootstrap script okay so if i take a look at vagrant file nothing fancy so i'm using ben to ubuntu 2004 just one node and if you want more nodes you can just update this variable i'm giving this virtual machine two gig of memory and two cpu the name is going to be ubuntu vm01 and i'm also attaching a private network with an ip address of 172.16.16.101 as this is the first node in this loop and let me also show you what I've got in my bootstrap uh, I'm setting password for the root account and I'm also enabling password authentication and permit root login because this is Ubuntu and root login is disabled by default so that's all I'm doing in the bootstrap script okay so let me bring up this vagrant up right so while the machine is coming up let's take a look at the system requirements and if I go to the system requirements, so hardware wise, how much CPU and how much RAM do you need? If you plan to use your machine just as a controller node, as a Kubernetes master node, you would need at least one CPU and one gig of RAM, although the recommended uh, spec is two CPU and two gig of RAM. I would go for two CPU and two gig of RAM. And that's what I've given my virtual machine. And then we've got worker node. If you want to use your machine just as a worker node, one CPU and half a gig of RAM, this is just a uh, uh, to give you uh, an indication of what you want to go for the minimum it all depends on the workload you want to run in your kubernetes cluster and if you want to run both controller and worker on the same node again one cpu is minimum one gig of ram is minimum but go for two cpu and two gig of ram right host operating system has to be linux and kernel version 3.10 or later and one of these architecture okay let's see how our virtual machine is coming up and it's up right SSH root at 172.16.16.101 so that's the IP address of my virtual machine and the password for the root account is admin right I'm in here now let's follow the documentation install KOS the very first command uh, by following this quick start guide as you can see there are lots of other ways to install KOS and bring up the Kubernetes cluster but the quick start guide gives you a handy little script that you can use so basically what it's doing is 
copy and run it but be very cautious about running these type of commands on your machine you know you're just downloading a script from internet from somebody and then you're running it with pseudo privileges so i would pay extreme careful attention before running these type these sort of commands you don't know what's in this shell script and you're running this with pseudo privileges so let's i've already looked into it but uh just have a look and you can see uh, i just find so what's the latest version and then it detects your architecture amd64 arm or arm 64 and then based on that it downloads the script from github it downloads the kos version uh, architecture from the github and then it moves it under user local bin and sets the executable permission that's all so it's not doing a big nasty thing so we can just rely on that script copy paste right and now you can see that's detected the latest version to be 1.21.2 and the architecture is AMD 64 so once that's done we're gonna run this command and what this command will do is it's going to create a systemd unit service and you can then start your cluster with systemd commands like systemctl start systemctl stop and things like that all right so kos is now executable in user local bin right if i do system ctl list unit files and then grep for kos we don't have anything right and ls war lib kos nothing there war lib kos is the directory where your kubernetes cluster configuration and other related files uh, are going to be stored uh, once we install kos as a service then you will see the system d unit right let's do this kos install controller single so basically what we are saying is include both controller and worker functions in this virtual machine so my virtual machine is going to act both as a controller as well as a worker node right let's run this command right all done and now if i again do systemctl list unit files and now you can see kos controller that's the new service that was added the next thing to do is to start the cluster so the command to start your kubernetes cluster we've got all the configuration ready and we don't have the cluster up and running yet and the command to start is kos start or you could use the traditional system ctl start kos controller equally these two commands should work let's go with kos start right so the command completed but it will take a couple of minutes for the cluster to be up and running if you take a look under war lib kos so that's where you will see all the information and what we've done so far is just download the kos binary and started the service which is bringing up the kubernetes cluster so nothing no dependencies or anything we haven't even installed the kubectl command if i do which kubectl we don't have it luckily the kos binary comes with the kubectl option so you don't have to download kubectl separately so if I do Q KOS kubectl cluster info, so that's our KOS cluster and I can do KOS status that gives you some information. All right, so KOS kubectl get nodes, the node is Ubuntu VM01 and it's ready. And if I do pods dash a, right, so the metric server pod is getting created and core DNS is also getting created right so we have our cluster running so i'm accessing it from my from the virtual machine directly and if i want to so we have kos kubectl command but if we want to use this from my host machine i need the admin conf file right so i need the kube config file so there are two places you can find it so there's a you could find it in war lib kos pki and there is this admin.con file so that's the base that's your cluster admin skew config file you can download that to your host machine and then you can run it let's do that so here i'm on my host machine i'm going to delete the dot cube directory from my previous runs and i'm going to create dot cube directory and i'm going to copy this admin.con file from the virtual machine okay so scp root at 172.16.16.101 which is the ip address of this machine war lib kos pki admin.con and i'm copying this under dot cube directory that i just created and the file that i'm going to rename is config so it needs to be config password is admin so now i can do kubectl cluster info and it won't work the reason being if i edit kube config and you can see 
the server is set to localhost. I need to change that to the IP address of that virtual machine. 172.16.16.101, save. Now I can run kubectl cluster info, kubectl top nodes, and now it's actually working. Kubectl top pods, cool. So the metric server is actually working fine. The other way is to generate the admin.com file. So if I do KOS, we close this. Okay. If you just run KOS on its own, it's going to show you all the available commands that you can use. And one of the command is cube config. All right. Let's take a look at KOS cube config admin. KOS cube config admin just prints out to the std out the uh, admin config file and you can basically point this to admin.conf and you have this admin.conf file that you can copy over or as i said earlier it's already in var lib kos pki admin.conf okay right I'm going to try something as simple nginx deployment. Okay, kubectl create deploy nginx, kubectl get all. Okay, nginx container is getting created, kubectl get port. Right, container is running. Let's expose it. kubectl expose deploy nginx port 80 as type node port. Get service and the node port is 32488. And if I do curl, 32488 and that's the IP address of uh, one of the node in the Kubernetes and we only have one node in our Kubernetes cluster and we uh, have welcome to nginx welcome page cool so that's working fine kubectl delete service kubectl delete deploy right so now it's time to do a cleanup so that's all for this video and maybe i can go over other parts in a different video but now let's try and clean up the mess that we made okay so uh we have all the things we have all configurations and files in kos and we have kubelet under war lib kubelet and then we have this ip tables mess so if we want to clean if we want to bring our virtual machine back to the state um, uh, how it was then we have to run kos reset followed by a reboot so that's what the documentation says i think yeah i think first we need to stop the cluster and do a kos reset and then restart the system let's do that kos stop or we could do system ctl stop kos controller that's done kos status kos is not running and i can do kos reset right uh it's all done and if i do ls war lib kos the directory is gone kubelet is still there so i'm going to delete that manually or a minus rf and if i do ip tables dash l and we still have all these leftovers from KOS installation. And if I reboot my virtual machine and the next time it comes up, the IP table should be clean. SSH admin IP tables dash L. Cool, our IP tables are clean now. I'm going to exit out of the virtual machine. I'm also going to destroy the virtual machine. All right, so that's it for this video. I will see you all in my next video. Until then, keep learning and keep on learning. Bye-bye.